Okay, we're going to give this a try. What I have done is I replaced both eye tubes with uh, uh, JAN, the Joint Army Navy VT 215s, which are the same as 65s. So those are brand new, they're new old stock, and they're, these are the, the JAN ones are ruggedized. So these things I expect to be tough. They're perfect for this machine. Um, I replaced the one mega ohm resistor in each one of these sockets so that uh, they have the best response they can. And I replaced a couple of resistors and a capacitor in the um, automatic volume control circuit inside the chassis. Um, a couple of the resistors, although they were within 20%, uh, 20% they weren't within 10%. And, and I don't know uh, why I didn't catch them before, but I went ahead and replaced those. And I had a cap that, yeah, I was iffy about. It was an oil cap, a small one, and I generally don't replace those, but it happened to be in that circuit, and so I thought, well, I'll go ahead and replace it. And sure enough, I get pretty good response out of this tuning eye now. So let's give it a shot. Let's turn it on, shall we? Right now, I don't, do not have the loop antenna that came with the radio hooked up. I just have a long wire antenna. I like that better. I think it sounds better, actually. Now this station, this is uh, um, KSOP 1370 in Salt Lake. That station, the transmitter and the tower are actually about 35 miles north of here, maybe a little further. And in between there and here is, is a pretty good section of the Salt Lake and also a whole bunch of cities. So I choose this station because if I'm going to have a weak station, it's going to be KSOP. So I like to use that as sort of my measuring stick whether or not this is going to be a good station. Um, if there's any storms, which there, you know, there's a little bit of weather right now, I'll pick up static between here and there, especially if I'm not using a loop antenna. But that's all right. It's a good test. Now watch the tuning eye. That's 888-971-7. It's a nice responsive tuning eye. Well, I tell you, the, uh, the lefty uh, news channels are just apoplectic about that, those travel restrictions. But if you look back at history, you'll see that, that uh, these things have been done in the past and nobody questioned them. Now, two things that you need to know. I'm in a basement, all right, and um, always in the basement, some of the stations at the low end, and I know you guys that have done a few radios know this, at the low end, you start to get a little bit weaker signal response. I take this radio upstairs, and these will come in as, as bright and clear as anything, so I'm not concerned about that. On your wedding ring. I'm at 570 right now. Before you do that, consider this. One in five Utahns has lost money just waiting for them. Oh. An hour and a half later, have a... All right, let's look at the FM, okay? Very, very responsive tuning eye. Very good response to signal. Look at that. Listen to that again, man. Another rush tune.
right cops are watching. I can almost see the rollers spinning. Anyway, uh, by the way, that's the second Rush tour that I saw. This, the second Rush concert, actually the third Rush concert because I saw them permanent waves twice. Second Rush tour that I saw was this one, Moving Pictures. That's Tom Sawyer off Moving Pictures. Excellent tune. That's another really good album. <laughs> Traffic from the Big O Tires Traffic Operations Center. Slow traffic being observed right now on 15 southbound between Beck Street and 2300 North, kind of near that Warm Springs Road area. 24. Alright, little confession guys, I'm an Ozzy Osbourne nut, man, I love Ozzy. I've seen Ozzy four times. I saw Ozzy at, in, the, during the, for the first one, Blizzard of Oz. I saw Ozzy for Diary of a Madman, and I saw Ozzy twice for Bark at the Moon. Wonderful. Man, that guy, all the hype about all the goofy stuff he does is not true. He is goofy, and he is crazy, and he's a very energetic performer. But I never saw any bats getting their heads bit off or any crap like that. Just good tunes. Uh, when I saw him in the first tour, he was his guitarist was a fellow by the name of Randy Rhodes, a little short guy that was just very energetic. Great, great music. And he played a lot of Black Sabbath tunes, and I'm a big Black Sabbath fan, so I love Ozzy. It's nice. All right, guys, that's enough of that. So now we've got the tuning eyes squared away. Got good response. Uh, alignment is good. Everything on this radio is set, except the record player parts aren't here yet. It's Monday, so I don't, it's February uh, 6th. I don't expect to see them yet. I think it's the 6th. Anyway, Monday. I will uh, make these little tags in the next day or two, and I'll get started on cleaning up that record player, preparing it for the parts. So I should be done with this thing within a week or so, and I'll be bringing it back uh, to the, uh, the, the restoration shop for whom I'm working. Thanks for checking it out. Just for grins, I thought I'd show you some of the old concert program books that I still had sitting around. I don't have too many for all the concerts I saw. Most of the time I was broke and I didn't buy one of these. Or I lost the thing between way back when and now. But I did save a few of them. And check this one out, man. This is uh, Pink Floyd. Let's see, I forget what year this was. I think it was about 87. It was uh, after Momentary Lapse of Reason. And it was a, that, was a great sh that was a great album and a great show. And, uh, you know, the usual cool stuff. I love, I love Pink Floyd. Been a big fan forever. I only saw him one time, but uh, it, was a, it was a good show. I really enjoyed it. So that, that was a cool show to see. I, I, I forget the year. I think it was about 87. Might have been earlier than that. Can't remember. And and uh, check this one out, guys. We've talked. I talked about this one in, earlier in the video. This is 1982, Diary of a Madman, Ozzy Osbourne. One of the best damn shows I ever saw. It was just a, a real blast. 
and um, I really really had fun today so it was it was <laughs> he's crazy there he is with uh, Randy Rhodes sadly Randy Rhodes died I believe in an airplane crash um, shortly after this concert tour but uh, I did get to see him play and it was really really nice so that was a good show um, one of the best shows actually that I ever saw I saw this um, at Alpine Valley Music Outdoor Music Theater in uh, in Wisconsin, uh, just north of the Illinois state line in Wisconsin. What a great place to see a show! It was really cool. Now I saw this one a couple of years later, the uh, Bark at the Moon tour. I saw this at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, Illinois. Um, it was a it was a really cool show. Uh, he did a lot of really great um, Black Sabbath stuff. Did Iron Man, Paranoid. Um, a whole bunch of things. One of my favorite tunes is a song called Planet Caravan. Did that song. He did some neat stuff, and it was a, a really cool show. Um, his keyboardist, I think the guy's name is Don Ayers, was fantastic in this show. Ozzy's a little weird, and he kind of gets into being weird, but that's all right. I love his music. The guy who replaced Randy Rhodes, Jake Lee, did a fantastic job. He's a, a really great guitarist, and I enjoyed seeing him play. Um, of course, here's the guy. Let me see if I can find it here. This guy, Don Airy, bizarre fella, but an awesome keyboardist. And when he did Mr. Crowley, it was really cool. It was a, a, a blast of a show, and I'm glad I saw it. That was back in my days of film photography, and I sneaked a camera into that show, and I took a lot of pictures using a, a 200 millimeter lens. And uh, I have them somewhere around still. Still, even though I use that long lens, it sure didn't seem like I was that close. But, good show. This one I saw about 12 years ago. This is Rush, their 30th anniversary tour. Man, I'll tell you something. These guys, Rush can put on a good show. They give you your money's worth. They play hard. They play well. Their stuff sounds like Rush. It sounds just as good in concert as it does on the record. And they just they just do a phenomenal job for a three man band man. I'll tell you these Canucks do an awesome. Um, they put out some awesome tunes. Um, some of my favorite music is Canadian anyway. Everyone's heard of Triumph. There's a lady singer who sings Celtic inspired and um, Medi and Mediterranean inspired music by the name of Lorena McKennett. If you like uh, if you like. Canadian music. If you know anything about Canadian music, you know about Lorena McKennett. But anyway, this is Rush. It was good. I saw this show with my daughter and my two best friends, and uh, it was fun. What's really cool about Rush is they've been around long enough, and they've stayed current long enough that a lot of their, uh, you know, their fans, they've got fans from three generations. I mean, people older than me from the early 70s when they first came, when, when Rush first, you know, started really doing their thing was in the mid-70s. People older than me like them. I dig them, and my daughter digs them too. So it, it's been it was really a, a worthwhile show. They put on some some really good tunes, and it was nice to reminisce. This was basically a uh, you know a celebration of all the years they've been making music. So we got to hear a little bit of every period for them. By far, the best rock concert I ever saw, bar none was this one right here, by, it was Super Tramp, 1983, at Alpine Valley, Wisconsin. This song was great. This was the famous Last Words tour, and it was probably, I mean, it was easily the best rock concert I ever saw. They played for about four hours. They did an intermission in, in the middle. The music was just beautifully done. The sound was great. I had fourth row seat right in the center. I mean, the singer and guitar player, Roger Hodgson, I, could, I saw his guitar string break. That's how close I was. What a great show. This is, a, this, this is the album where the song It's Raining Again came out. Not my favorite Supertramp song, but it was, they did a great job. They did a lot of Crime of the Century stuff. They did a, a lot of Breakfast in America stuff. They did some older things. It was just a, an awesome, awesome show. And uh, that's one that I'll, I'll never forget. I really enjoyed it. And then I saw Supertramp a couple of years later after Roger Hudson left the band. And that was a good show too. A much more jazzy show. 
Without Roger Hodgson, the band was much more jazz oriented, and I really, really had a blast. So, you know, these are just uh, some of my leftover leftover mementos from my uh, uh, earlier bygone life. I gave these to my daughter. She likes all of this music, so um, that's kind of cool. She's like 27 now, so she's old enough to have checked it all out, and she really, really kind of kind of likes it. So I thought she might like these. Besides, she's into you know, art and fashion, and she's a model and all that stuff, so this, this kind of fits in with her, what she likes to have and collect. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to work on this record player now. I've uh, fiddle-farted long enough, and it's, it's uh, time to actually get some things done. What, do work? No, I don't think so. You see, uh, Marty and me, we don't do the W word. So, I'll just end on that note. Once again, from Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.